Have you ever just browsed the Yahoo Finance website and thought to yourself, wow, there's a lot of really valuable data on this website. I wish there was a way for me to get all of this data in my spreadsheet. In this video, I'm going to walk you through everything that you need to know about the Yahoo Finance API, but most importantly, how it is that you can get historical and real-time data on your spreadsheet. And if you stay until the end, I'm going to show you a way in which you can get this data without the need to program or code. Okay, so back in the day, Yahoo Finance used to have an API. I never used it myself, but this is what I was able to research from the past. And apparently that API was really helpful to be able to get financial data from Yahoo Finance. However, for many different reasons, the company decided to shut down the API. But the good thing is that the investing community and a community of open source developers decided to build uh, some other open source APIs. One of them, and this is the one that we're going to be discussing in this video, is Y Finance. And as you can imagine, it is pretty helpful and it is well documented in order for you to be able to get all the financial data that you need from the Yahoo Finance website. However, there are some downsides to using this method, and we're going to be discussing some of those as we go along in the video. So as you can imagine, in order to follow along in this video, you do need to know a little bit of coding, especially Python programming. And it's not very difficult uh, to be able to learn. So there's a lot of really good YouTube videos on how you can use Python and how you can get started with this good programming language. And that's what we're going to be using. However, yeah, in order to get the data that you need using Python, it's not as complicated as you would think the main thing is how do you get that data into excel and we're also going to be discussing that so to start off what you have to do is go on your terminal or command line and then do pip install y finance okay so for this video i'm gonna be using pycharm as my code editor and from here i don't have to install it from the terminal instead what you do is go preferences and then you go project interpreter right here and then we're gonna add a new package. And then we look for the package. So as you can see, this is the one. And then you simply have to install it. Just a quick note, if you're on Mac and it says that you're missing this library right here needed to be able to install the Y Finance, then what I recommend is that you follow this stack overflow and basically what you need to do is go on the command line, enter this command, this will install Xcode and then amongst the uh, contents of Xcode you will be able to have uh, this library right here. Okay, so once you have Y Finance installed, what you need to do is very easy. All you have to do is import Y Finance. And then from there, what you're going to do is you're going to create an object with the specific ticker that you're looking for. Once you have that object, what you can do is then access all the different attributes of the object. So you can access the information, history, actions, dividends, splits, financials, quarterly financials, major holders, institutional holders. Anyways, you can see um, all of this yourself in the documentation, which is going to be linked in the description of this video. But I just want to walk you through a couple examples in code and most importantly, how it is that you can get some of this data on your Excel spreadsheet. So let's say that we want to get data for Apple. What we have to do in this case is import and then Y finance as YF. And then what we do is create that object for Y Finance. So in this case, we're going to enter the ticker of the company, Apple equals Y Finance dot ticker. And then from here, we're going to enter the ticker of the company, which in this case, we know it's Apple and this is the company's ticker. So let's say that what we're looking for in terms of data is to get the company's balance sheet on a quarterly basis and then the company's dividends. So what we do is very simple. You enter again the object Apple and then here we're going to do quarterly balance sheet. And what we're going to do is print this so we can actually visualize this. And as you can see, what's going to happen is that we're going to be able to visualize the company's balance sheet. So here there's a whole bunch of dates. 
uh, on a quarterly basis and in this case it goes from 2022 0625 until this which is actually the limit for the free version of Yahoo Finance and then here we have all the different items of the balance sheet they're listed and they also have uh, their values as well what you do need to know is that this is a pandas data frame so that's important to know because we're gonna then export this data into excel now what we're gonna do is we want to see the dividends so again this is very similar you enter print because we want to see the values and if you see the um, suggestions that come up that's because i'm using pie charm and that's why i recommend it as a package because it gives you all these recommendations so you don't have to memorize everything from a specific package uh, documentation so again we're going to use the apple object and then here we're going to enter dividends and we're going to print i'm going to comment this out so that way we only see the dividends and what's going to happen is that it's going to display all the dividends uh, the one thing you do have to keep in mind is that sometimes it takes a while for the data to show because it actually has to go to yahoo finance and scrape the data and bring it to you and as you can see what's going to happen is that you have the dates and it's going to tell you the different dividend payments that the company made for this particular dates uh, when you see these three dots it means that it's not showing all of this data it's only giving you a summary okay so now what we're gonna do is to get this balance sheet that we got and we were able to see here before into our excel spreadsheet so the way that you can do this is first to create a data frame object so in this case we say balance sheet data frame and that's equal to the same thing that we've entered here apple that quarterly balance sheet and then from there what you're going to do is you're going to take this data frame and you're going to say uh, send it to excel and this is where you're going to enter the name of the file where um, if you don't have a file it's going to be created for you and this file is going to be saved in the same directory where you have this code running you can also change it to a different directory using the um, the OS module for Python. So I'm going to run this code and I'm going to show you what that looks like in Excel. So as you can see, the code finished running here and now I'm going to go to the Excel file. And as you can see, this is what you're going to get on your Excel file. So first, we're going to make some adjustments here to better be able to visualize the data and the problem is that for some of these financial statements the data is going to be out of order like for example typically in google finance for the balance sheet you want to see the assets first then the liabilities and the equity but here you can see that the items seem to be messed up out of order so what you could do is to create a script that basically uh, it's going to order this data put it in the right order that you want to see uh, the same thing here for the numbers. We don't want to see these numbers with this E and 11. So something you can do is obviously just to format them right here on Excel. But um, you could also do it programmatically as well. Just to show you one more example, I'm going to do the same for the dividends. So what I'm going to do is comment this out. And then I'm going to create a data frame object. So in this case, dividend data frame we're going to call it and that's going to be equal to apple um, dot dividends that's perfect now what we have to do is take that data frame and convert it into the excel file so dot to excel and then here we're going to enter so we're going to use the same file and what's going to happen since we're doing this is that the code is going to run that excel file is only going to contain the dividend information so i'm going to run the code as you can see now it's finished now if i go to the excel file what's going to happen is from y finance and from the yahoo finance api we're able to get this data into excel and as you can see what it includes is the date you can change the formatting and also the formatting for the numbers and it's going to include all the dividend payments that Apple in this case has made. And then from here, you could play around. You could change the information, change the order in which the data is presented, the formatting, anything you want.
So as you can see, the Yahoo Finance API is relatively simple to use in terms of the coding. You do have to know a little bit about coding on Python, but it's not that complicated. The main challenge is if you want to be able to visualize the data effectively and you want to do that in Excel and then perform any types of analysis, calculations, etc. That's going to be hard. That's the hardest part because you're going to have to build into your program different scripts and different codes to be able to get the data exactly how you want, clean up the financial statements, clean up the formatting of the spreadsheet, make it dynamic so that if you change the company ticker, you get different data. And that takes a lot of time. And that's why what I want to do is I want to show you a no code alternative to the Yahoo Finance API that works right in Excel and Google Sheets and allows you to make this work a lot more easy. So the way Y Sheets works is very simple. You install the add-on on Excel or Google Sheets. Once you have it installed, you log in with your account, which by the way, you can create for free. And then here you have the Y Sheets add-on. What you can do is enter the company ticker. So in this case, we're gonna do Apple. Select annual or quarterly data. And then here you have the option of SEC as reported financials or standardized financials. You're gonna click on get data. And what's going to happen is that you're going to get all of the financial statements here. Let me close this so you can see better and everything is going to be formatted in the proper order. And most importantly, you're going to be able to see data going back to 2003. So that is a lot of data available. And the same thing applies for the other financial statements here. You can see the balance sheet, of course, the cash flow statement key metrics, growth metrics. Now let's say that you don't want to get all this data at once and then have to do a lot of work on your own. What you can do is to build models like this one. So let's say this is the specific way in which you want to get data. What you can do is from Y sheets, it comes with the Y's and Y's price functions, which allow you to get historical and real time data on your spreadsheet. So in this case, you can see this is the Y's function. And then we also have the wise price function. So you can see how the functions work and you can test them out for yourself. But I want to show you how this model works. So in this case, we want the P ratio. We do this using the wise function. So it gets the data, the P ratio for Apple for all these different periods. As you can see, if I click, it's going to refresh, give me the data. And then the same thing is applied right here. So here I have some more data that I'm requesting and you can also get data in bunches. So in this case, I'm getting all this data at once. So I'm getting data for all these different parameters for this company, for all these periods, as you can see the updates and you can also do some calculations, right? Like in this case, we have some typical Excel formulas, but the cool thing is that once you have something set up like this, you can simply change the company ticker. And what's going to happen is that all of the data will automatically update for you in exactly the format and the way that you want. So as you can see, the process is done and we have all the data that we're looking for. As you can see, using the two different functions, Y sheets covers all these data. So using the Y's function, you can get all this information from the income statement, all this different information in terms of key metrics blah 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 so as you can see there's the financial statements key metrics financial growth then there's also revenue segments so here's where you could see a company's revenue breakdown in terms of its different business segments like for example for apple it would be like iphones macs services blah 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 and then also geographic revenue so here you would see this much money is coming from the us this from europe blah 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 and then with the wise price function, you can get live price data that you can refresh anytime you want. So here's some of the things that are covered, dividend data, and then historical price data. Altogether, using Y sheets, you can build uh, models like this where you have a whole bunch of companies and then you can compare them across the metrics that really matter to you. And the cool thing is that you can take, for example, this company, you can change the ticker, and what's going to happen is that all of the data will automatically update for you. So that way you always get the latest numbers and you're able to compare companies a lot quicker, which means you can find better investment opportunities 
faster. So there you have it. Now you know everything that you need to know about the Yahoo Finance API. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications bell on so you get notified every time we release a new video that's going to allow you to become a more successful investor. I'll see you in the next one.